There is a reason why the Okinawans in Japan have such a better life expectancy, and it has to do with their caloric restriction. I'm not saying that you go out and you just reduce calories and do this thing. I'm suggesting that you learn the biochemistry and a little bit of the science that you know when fasting and caloric restriction could be playing a positive role in longevity and potential anti-aging. Let's dive in. Okay, so we've seen for quite some time in animal models that caloric restriction plays a role in longevity. But when you look at animal models like worms and flies and things like that, it's not that exciting because it doesn't directly translate into humans. But as time has gone on, we've seen, okay, well, if you look at rhesus monkeys, if you restrict their calories, they start to live a little bit longer and start to have better quality of life. Okay, we're starting to lean into it. But then when you look at some of the human models, then it gets interesting. For example, World War I, okay, we had a lot of people that were obviously going through periods of starvation. Well, years later, after World War I, we noticed that, hmm, interesting, those that kind of went through periods of starvation, mortality rates went down 34%. That's really intriguing, okay? And then they also found that again after World War II. So there's something going on here. And then of course, if you couple that with the Okinawans that periodically reduce their caloric intake by 25 to 50%, they generally live like 20% longer. Okay, we're on to something, but correlation doesn't equal causation, okay? Just because that happened doesn't mean it's really true. So let's dive into the science. This is where something called sirtuins, which sound totally boring and totally lame, come into play. But I promise you, stick with me through this video and I will make this into fun analogies where you get it and you can understand the powerful potential anti-aging properties of fasting and caloric restriction. So there was a landmark study published in PLOS1 that originally found kind of the link between sirtuins and anti-aging. So they found that mice that did not have this thing called sirtuins, these genes, mice that did not have sirtuins did not have any positive effect from caloric restriction or fasting. It didn't do anything to them. However, mice that did have the sirtuins had a positive effect from caloric restriction and fasting. Hmm, okay, definitely a connection going there. And then a follow-up study also published in PLOS1 took a look at humans. And they found that when they put humans into a 25% caloric restricted setting, they had massively increased levels of what is called mitochondrial biogenesis. Complicated term once again, here I go. Mitochondrial biogenesis basically just means they're producing more energy potential. They're creating more energy powerhouses within their cell. What's going on here? How does fasting or caloric restriction create more energy potential. That doesn't make sense. It seems like it'd be the opposite. When we eat, we have energy, right? Wrong. You see, when we are fasting, we are creating an energy crisis in our body. Our body is desperate for energy. So rather than just sit there and complain and be a victim about it, the body tries to do something. It says, let's create more mitochondria so that we can create more energy. Mitochondria creates energy. So more mitochondria means more energy. The body doesn't necessarily know what's going on. All it knows is, oh shoot, I don't have food coming in. So let's find a way to try to make as much energy as we can. Oh, and by the way, let's also start pulling some body fat from your tissue and use that for fuel because it's a good fuel to use in the meantime. Okay, I'll take that. We have more energy powerhouses and we're burning fat. Heck to the yeah. So this mitochondrial biogenesis and the fats that are getting liberated this all happens because they get, get ready for another weird term, deacetylated. Basically, all deacetylated means is unlocked. It's a scientific term for saying unlocked. When we deacetylate something, we unlock something. And I'll explain more about that in just a second. Okay, but these fat releasing things that we've unlocked and these energy powerhouse making things that we've unlocked cannot be unlocked without sirtuins. And sirtuins get activated by fasting and caloric restriction. See where I'm going with this? So sirtuins basically govern the results of fasting. Without sirtuins, we don't get a benefit from fasting. So I'm sitting here like, uh, how do we get more sirtuins? Well, here we go. So if you remember how I talked about deacetylation just being unscrewing, let me paint a picture for you for a second. I want you to imagine a little wooden ball, okay? And this little wooden ball has a bunch of screws screwed into it, okay? And these screws are only screwed in halfway. So you basically have a spiky ball. And this spiky ball is inside a cage. 
You can't get the ball out of the cage because the screws are in the ball. You're trying and trying, but it just it won't fit out between the cages, right? It won't fit out. So how do you do that? Well, here's how we paint a picture of what a sirtuin does. A sirtuin is like a drill. You have the drill that has the power to unscrew those screws so the ball can get out. The ball is the receptor protein that we're trying to activate. Okay, it's a magical little ball that has the ability to have anti-aging effects and longevity effects, but it's always locked up in a cage and it never has the ability to get out. But when we activate sirtuins, we activate the drill. But the drill needs a battery. And the battery comes from something called NAD, which we'll talk about in just a second, but I'm gonna try to keep this high level. So basically, when we fast, here's what happens. When we fast, we have so much leftover energy because we're not wasting energy on digestion, on glycolysis, on these other processes that use NAD, use energy. So we have an abundance of extracellular energy. So what do we do with that NAD? What do we do with that cellular energy? Well, it becomes a battery pack for that drill. So now that drill that was just sitting there idle with nothing to do now has a supercharged battery on it. And it, and it unscrews those screws. So all of a sudden, the monster is let out of its cage and it can run around your body doing its anti-aging longevity things. Releasing fat from your tissue, activating mitochondrial biogenesis, activating FOXO, all kinds of other things that have to do with anti-aging and longevity. And the list truly does go on and on. So in essence, we liberate energy that powers a drill to unlock a lot of anti-aging benefits. Now, if you consume something, it stops this process. An exception to that rule is going to be something like electrolytes, which by the way, if you're fasting, doing like a longer term fast, or even a short term fast, I highly recommend you use electrolytes because it will allow you to fast longer without disrupting your fast. That is very important because as insulin levels drop when you fast, you excrete more and it naturally happens. It's like when you fast for even 10, 12, 14 hours, you suddenly start peeing more, but with your urine leaving you, you're also leaving sodium, potassium, magnesium, and that has to be replenished, normally replenished through food. My fasting electrolyte that I would recommend is Element, L-M-N-T, and there's a link down below for you to try a sample pack of it. So you get eight packs of Element, you just pay shipping. So it's totally free. I want you to be able to try it. So you go to drinklmnt.com slash thomas that's d-r-i-n-k lmnt.com slash thomas and you just pay shipping and you can try element that way you can try it with your fasting try it with ketosis whatever you literally just pay a couple bucks for shipping so special link only for people that watch my videos down in the description so now that this monster is released of course we have to continue to release the monster more but eventually batteries run out of juice right and when batteries run out of juice what do we do we either throw them away or we plug them into a charger. Well, our body has a charger. It's called nicotinamide phosphoribosyl transferase. Again, super complex name that means nothing to most of us, okay? Basically, when we are fasting, we actually create more chargers too. So we end up completing the whole circuit here. We have energy that is in a battery that allows us to unscrew, but then when the battery drains, it plugs into this charger and it gets more power. Essentially, we create almost a perpetual motion device for this NAD that allows us to continually have an anti-aging effect. And one could argue the longer the fast, the more potent anti-aging effect. I'm more so from the school of thought that periodic, moderate length fasts are actually better just because they're more sustainable, but that's just my opinion, it doesn't really matter. Now, what about the true sort of anti-aging effect? And I say that with like air quotes because that's a term we have to be careful with. If we look at longevity, it probably makes more sense, right? Well, we have this thing called FOXO, okay? And this is another gene, something else that gets activated by sirtuins. And what FOXO does is it triggers or helps promote autophagy. And if you've watched plenty of my videos before, you're probably no stranger to autophagy. Autophagy is the cellular recycling that occurs where old decrepit components of our cells get recycled and used uh, basically to fuel other cells. It's recycling and allowing us to become more efficient. I always call it survival of the fittest within our body. But a lot of that is regulated by FOXO, which guess what? Has to get deacetylated as well from, you guessed it, Mr. Sirtuin. Tim the tool man Taylor coming to work to make sure that you can be healthy. Well then, what else does FOXO do? 
FOXO also plays a role in stopping some of the reactive oxygen species that affect our cells. We are constantly being bombarded with just things that trigger reactive oxygen species. That means uh, oxidative stress. FOXO acts as a barrier to that. That's why when we're fasting, we actually have a good degree of combating oxidative damage. This oxidative damage, when we're talking about the DNA of the cell within the nucleus, well, if we have a lot of oxidative damage, that can cause mutations when they're going through a replication. I'm not going to say the C word here, because then you know what it is, and YouTube doesn't like it when I talk about it for some reason. The point is, is that when cells mutate in a bad way, it leads to blank, okay? And we know what that is, not a good thing. So could sirtuins actually prevent some of this mutation? Well, they absolutely can prevent some mutation. I'm not implying that they prevent you know what, but again, we look at some of the evidence and we see in adjunct to a lot of treatments, it could be powerful. Point is, is we have longevity benefits and then we also have these anti-mutation reactive oxygen species benefits, right? We age and we kind of get the weathered look on our body because of oxidative damage over time. It's just kind of a natural response. So we might just be uncovering a way to kind of back off of that a little bit. We just have to make sure we're doing it safe and we're doing it right. And I have plenty of videos that break down fasting and it's full nature. It's just important that you do it right and you take care of your body in the process. As always, keep it locked in here on my channel and don't forget to check out Element down below in the description.